Hey there, folks. I'm Parker Thune here with some breakfast bites on this Monday morning in the aftermath of Oklahoma's very, very ugly, borderline appalling 16 to 12 win over Houston on Saturday night. Eight quarters under the belt for the Sooners thus far in the 2024 season. And following a game like that, it becomes apparent that things need to change. You need to reevaluate. You need to examine the players that you have at your disposal, the personnel options that you have at your disposal and make some revisions. So I have some suggestions. Lord knows I don't know nearly as much as the coaches that are employed to coach football at the University of Oklahoma. But here are five guys that I perceive as worthy of more playing time going forward for Oklahoma, given the current circumstances. Number five is Sammy Omasigo. I think Sammy Omasigo needs to see the field more. And the immediate rejoinder, and it's an understandable one, is, well, who are you going to pull off the field if you're going to give Sammy Omasigo more run? And I don't think you necessarily have to answer that question to have the expectation, have the belief that there are still opportunities out there to get Sammy Omasigo more playing time because we've seen him play inside backer. We've seen him play the cheetah spot. He offers positional versatility. He's got a linebacker's body and a defensive back speed, and he has made some plays for Oklahoma through these first two weeks. Had a sack on Saturday against Houston, and when he's been in the game, he's been disruptive, and that's what you look for. What are guys doing with the opportunities that have been presented to them, limited as they may be, and what might they do if those opportunities increase? So I think regardless of how you find more playing time, more snaps for Samuel Masigo, I think that needs to happen some way, somehow. Number four is Ivan Carrion. And admittedly, this is a little bit more of a speculative opinion, a conceptual opinion, more so than one that's based on tangible data. But watching the game Saturday night, there were instances where the Sooners were rolling out three wide receivers in the same formation that were all five foot ten or shorter. There was a lot of speed on the field. There was not a lot of size on the field. And I think size in the wide receiver core is one thing that it would behoove the Sooners to utilize in the coming weeks. And I understand that there's not a ton of faith in J.J. Hester, given the couple drops that he had in week one. Uh, He did not catch a pass in week two against Houston. So if it's not going to be Hester that is the cursory tree in this wide receiver room until Nick Anderson gets healthy again, then I think Carrion is a guy that you have to take a long, hard look at because if nothing else, he has a massive catch radius. And I don't mean to go all Kirk Herbstreet on you, but especially for a quarterback that's struggling to place the ball and evidently struggling with his confidence a little bit, the way that Jackson Arnold was on Saturday, having a guy that you know is a matchup nightmare and that you don't necessarily have to throw a perfect ball to in order for him to go come down with a catch, that's a valuable thing for a young quarterback that's getting acclimated to being the guy to have. Now, I was very much under the impression, and still kind of am, that it was going to take Carrion a year to be truly ready to make a productive dent in the wide receiver room for Oklahoma, but desperate times call for desperate measures, and I don't don't necessarily think playing Carrion is a desperate measure. I think he's more than capable of going out there and giving you solid snaps, but the reality looking around that wide receiver room right now is they're ravaged. Andrell Anthony still isn't quite up to speed. Jalil Farouk's on the shelf. Nick Anderson is still working his way back from injury. So there are precious little veterans. I didn't even mention Jaden Gibson. Jaden Gibson's been out all year and will be out all year. But there are precious few guys in this passing attack right now for Oklahoma that Jackson Arnold can trust to go make a competitive catch. And I'm not saying Deion Burks can't do that. I'm not saying Brennan Thompson can't do that. What I'm saying is you're going to trust a guy who's six foot six to go make a competitive catch a little bit more than you're going to trust a guy who's 5'9 or 5'10. That's just the reality of it. So I'd like to see Carion deployed a little bit more this weekend against Tulane and maybe see what he can offer if you throw four or five balls his way over the course of the game. I brought up Brennan Thompson just a moment ago. He's number three for me, but in a very specific manner. I'm not talking about Brennan Thompson, the wide receiver. I'm talking about Brennan Thompson, the return man, because... OU has had some issues in the return game through two weeks. Peyton Mullen was sidelined for the second half of the game on Saturday, and I, th- I still think he's your best option at punt returner, but even he muffed a punt before exiting the game. And Billy Bowman just looked rusty against Houston, both as a kick returner and as a punt returner. He got stuck at the 15-yard line trying to bring a kick out of the end zone. He pratfalled 
in receiving a couple of punts. It was a little bit weird to witness. But if you're looking for somebody that can be a game breaker in the return game, somebody who's electric with the ball in their hands, somebody that can be a one cut and gone type of guy, there are very few guys on this roster that have the same type of game breaking ability in that capacity as Brennan Thompson does. So again, I still think Peyton Bowen, when healthy, is your best punt returner. He's the guy I most want to see back there. But in the kick return department, if your mission is to generate explosive plays in the return game, then you've got to get the ball in the hands of explosive playmakers. And Brennan Thompson's an explosive playmaker. Number two is Grayson Halton. And I mean, it's kind of the same predicament that it is with Omasigo in that you have so many established contributors at his position group that it's going to be difficult to fit more snaps in edgewise for a guy like him. But Halton has been undeniable through the first two weeks of the season. He's made more plays than anybody on the defensive front four for Oklahoma. Other guys have had their moments. Halton has had more of those moments, and he's had the play of the season for Oklahoma thus far, forcing that safety to effectively ice the game on Saturday night when the Sooners needed a defensive play in the worst way. They needed somebody to step up and make a key play, and that was Grayson Halton. And he has stepped up so many times in the past. This isn't exclusive to 2024. When he's been on the field at OU, whether as a true freshman in 2022, last year in 2023, or certainly as he has inherited some additional responsibility here early in 2024, the guy has been a consistent playmaking machine when he's been on the field. And I want to see more of that. Number one won't shock anybody, and it's Taylor Tatum. Somehow he ended the night against Houston with just one carry for six yards. And by no means am I out on Gavin Sawchuk or Javante Barnes. I still think those are two talented backs, but the fact remains they have been less than impressive through the first two weeks of the season. Sawchuk had four carries for four yards against the Cougars. Barnes had 12 carries for 40 yards. This backfield has lacked explosiveness through two weeks. And Tatum provides a legitimate three-down skill set out of the backfield in what limited sample size we have seen, not just of Tatum, but of the other backs. I think he has demonstrated the most burst of the group. He's going to have to become a more reliable pass blocker if he's going to carve out a more permanent role throughout the season. But I don't see any reason why Tatum's touches shouldn't increase this coming weekend against Tulane. If he can do with a lot what he has done with a little, then he can add a very exciting dimension to this Oklahoma offense and make things easier on Jackson Arnold as far as being able to establish the downfield passing game. Let me know in the comments if there's anybody I neglected, anybody that you'd like to see on the field more frequently for Oklahoma this weekend against Tulane and moving forward. Certainly subscribe to OUinsider.com where we've got behind the scenes insights on the team, on recruiting, on all things pertinent to Oklahoma football and Oklahoma athletics as a whole. I'll see you over there. Take it easy, everybody.